start by thanking all of those who have spoken in tonight's debate. Um, obviously, my honourable friend for Westminster North set out the scale of the cost of living crisis and also the need for more targeted support. We heard from a number of honourable members um, a, a series of interesting points, and I would like to thank uh, the member for Waveney, Glasgow East, Amber Valley, uh, the chair of the Select Committee, the member for East Ham, the member for Popular and Limehouse, the member for Oldham East and Saddleworth, and indeed the member for North East Fife, who made some interesting points, the member for Cunnan Valley, the member for Hayes and Harlington, Leeds East, Strangford, and finally Kilmarnock and Loudoun. Mr Deputy Speaker, there is no doubt that pensioners and families across this country now face a severe cost of living crisis. Food prices are up, gas prices are up, the cost of living is going up. The Bank of England says that households must brace themselves for the biggest drop in living standards for 30 years. Millions of people now face the choice between heating and eating. Pensioners, children and those in greatest need will sadly be hit hardest. Yet so far, the best this government can do is to offer an inadequate pay now, sorry, buy now, pay later scheme. To make matters worse, the Chancellor and the Prime Minister are insisting on sticking with a national insurance hike that will hit working people and businesses hardest. And today we've heard how the government's failure extends to pensioners and those who rely on essential benefits. I don't want to repeat the points made by my honourable friend for Westminster North, and I understand time is now limited. But in summing up, I do want to focus on how ministers are making this dreadful situation worse. The Chancellor could have raised the windfall tax to reduce energy bills. Instead, he's chosen to protect the super profits of the energy companies over the welfare of the nation's pensioners and most vulnerable. The government's proposed council tax rebate may fail to reach those who need the most help. It is not clear, Mr Deputy Speaker, how pensioners who do not pay council tax by direct debit because of their low income or who um, have other, other issues will receive this benefit. Dame Claire Moriarty, the Chief Executive of, the Citizens, of Citizens Advice, has said energy rebates are a buy-now, pay-later solution which only provide temporary relief later this year, and linking financial assistance to council tax will result in a complicated lottery that means that support is not targeted at the people who need it most. The Government has failed to deliver also on its manifesto promise to insulate homes, and it's also failed to support businesses with high energy costs. In contrast, a Labour government would have offered real solutions, including a one-off windfall tax on energy companies' profits, which would help all fairly support, provide support for businesses and, indeed, long-term investment to improve our energy security and home insulation. Mr Deputy Speaker, we will not be opposing today's uprating order, but I want to make clear that this is no solution to the wider crisis facing our pensioners. Pensioners were let down when the government broke its manifesto promise and severed the earnings link to the component of the triple lock. They were also let down when the government broke its manifesto promise to keep the TV licence free for over 75s. Almost a fifth of pensioners are living in poverty under this government, and over a million pensioner households sadly are missing out on pensions ta pensioner tax credit, take up of which the government seems to have done little to improve. I'm afraid also the Department for Work and Pensions has underpaid pensions for th by thousands of pounds and has been responsible in some cases in severe delays in payments. We know of some newly retired pensioners who've had to wait over three months to receive their pension, which they've worked hard all their lives for. Mr Deputy Speaker, I am conscious of time and I would just like to sum up by saying we face a severe cost of living crisis. Pension pensioners and families face a truly dreadful situation Yet the government, I'm afraid, is failing to listen and to respond. Yeah, Thank you, yeah, Mr. Yeah, Speaker. Thank you very much. Minister. Yeah. Yeah.